right, thanks for welcoming me today. Um, I don't think anyone knows the answers of the future here in this space, but to give you some context, I think I have uh, as much a vantage point as anybody. Uh, I've invested well over $100 million in more than seven years of my life uh, working on developing sustainable materials technologies. And in this race that we heard about this morning that we're all against in this climate crisis, I've actually come to believe that modern innovation is not about making the next big thing. It's actually about remaking it. And it may not be the sexiest term to call it the next same thing, but uh, as saying the next big thing, but I think when you want to disrupt an industry uh, in service to positive change, it's critical to innovate on beloved products that are popular in the marketplace without sacrificing what people love about them. Um, as Imran said, I'm the CEO of Bolt Threads, and the short version is Bolt Threads makes biomaterials. And these are materials that everyone in this room can use to make your products. Uh, on site, they're kind of uh, an interesting duality of simultaneously very familiar in their properties, and in some ways wildly unique from what you're currently using. And these are materials that are completely redesigned from the ground up to lessen the environmental impact they have on our planet. And we envision a future where you swapping out your harmful legacy materials for the materials Bolt makes would dramatically help our planet. It's stuff that you can make clothes and shoes and handbags out of. Uh, it really is the next same thing. But if we embrace the next same thing, we can make a huge dent in fixing this environmental impact crisis that this industry suffers from without compromising the vitality and growth in this industry. I actually have this um, maybe misplaced belief, but I think it would turbocharge it with that embracing the new change and the demand that would bring in the consumer marketplace. So what I'm here to tell you is that if you care about reducing waste, pollution, and the impacts of repair production, and keeping this planet habitable for the next 100 years and beyond, I think there's one word you need to think about, and one word only. Before I tell you what that is, we're going to talk a little bit about where we are and how we got here. So presumably fashion was started in the very beginning as a need to clothe ourselves, but you look at it now and it's this ubiquitous market, it covers the world, it actually literally touches every person on the planet every day, and is simultaneously one of the most polluting industries in the world. Um, we heard some of these statistics earlier. I've got my three favorite ones here. Uh, you know, we consume more energy than aviation and shipping combined. Uh, our products release 1.5 million tons a year of microfibers into our oceans uh, with as to yet unknown effect. Um, and we account for more than 20% of global water pollution. Uh, and yet, there are positives. Here we are with an industry that touches every one of those 7 billion people on this planet with global reach and influence built into the model. And that's impressive. That means we can change. Uh, culture and markets can actually move based on the decisions people in this very room make in your jobs. So I'm asking you, why don't we seize this positioning we have to grasp the narrative and do something about the ugly statistics that we're generating today? So now back to that one word. Uh, you would not be uh, incorrect to guess that I'm going to say biomaterials, because I went and told you that Bolt's in the business of making and selling biomaterials, uh, but that's not it. Uh, I've actually seen firsthand how much biomaterials have been marketed as the fashion industry's salvation. Uh, and the challenges are many of those materials are either vaporware or greenwashing. And even the successes, the ones that have real planet positive benefits, things like biodegradability, um, zero petroleum input, uh, are not necessarily the answer. Because the greatest innovations in the world that we can come up with have zero hope of changing the world if we can't actually bring those products to the world. So, brings me back to that one word. Scale. Scale is far and away the most crucial criteria for any technology that purports to make the world better and greener. So scale means technology that has the potential to impact consumer behavior daily and markets at a global scale. You need to touch all 7 billion of those people. And scale is really about taking what was once a conscious choice by an individual and making it a routine choice by everyone, making it the standard. And scale in this industry, in my belief, would allow us to align profit and purpose in a way that with every unit of product we sell, it's in service of making a cleaner and better planet. 
At Bolt, we actually have this uh, weird notion internally that we want things to be a net positive, rather not net neutral, but net positive for the planet. And the word scale, I've actually found as a startup entrepreneur and living in Silicon Valley, we talk about it a lot, but it's actually quite abstract concept and can be quite difficult for people to grasp. And so I have, a, I have an example uh, that I'm gonna give you. Um, this is not a trick question. Everyone know what this is? Yeah, seen, seen one of these before? Yeah? I'm, I'm, okay. Um, this is a single-use plastic water bottle. I think everyone can relate to this. Everyone's probably seen a bunch of these. We often don't think of this as technology, but it is. It was patented in 1973. Um, it's ubiquitous around the world today. It basically sat on the shelf for a while. Today, more than a million of these are sold every minute. A million of them every minute. That's scale. That's impacting every person across the planet. And so with that one word, I would focus on scale. Something that was novel becomes something ubiquitous. And that can be good. I think of things here like life-saving vaccines. At scale, that's really good for the world. Uh, some things are maybe a little less good, like that plastic water bottle over there. Um, for our industry, I believe scale means that every consumer on the planet, the many, many billions of us, can easily participate in this movement towards safer and more sustainable materials. And now is the moment that scale matters more than ever. As we heard this morning, we're in a climate catastrophe. This is a planet barreling uh, forward with a very short amount of time to come up with solutions if we don't want to suffer major impacts. And time is short. And when time is short, change matters. And if change matters, scale matters. And here's one of the challenges that kind of comes from uh, biomaterials. The history is one of one-offs in science projects, and those aren't going to get us there. There's a lot of great new sustainable technologies emerging. They take a long time to go from the lab to global scale. And lots of smart and very well-intentioned people uh, are working on them. In fact, Bolt's been one of them. That, that gold dress right there is something we're very proud of. It's a museum piece we did with our good friend Stella McCartney. We think it opened the eyes of people to what can be done with technology, but a single unit isn't really changing the world. We need to make billions of them. So I'm gonna say that the number one way we should be evaluating biomaterials and sustainable material technologies is in their potential and actual progress towards scale and becoming competitive alternatives to all the un unsustainable materials that exist in the market today. And I'll give you two examples of things I think are doing this, not in our industry yet. Um, think about Tesla or Impossible Foods. They're not just good products in their category, they're good products, period. You can buy a Tesla and you can drive it around because you want to reduce air pollution, lessen the reliance on fossil fuels, or you can drive around because it's a cool car that goes really fast. You find people who eat the Impossible Burger. Uh, that's been a very big headline in the United States this year. If you want to diminish the impact of greenhouse gases from the livestock economy, as well as help conserve water, you might also just happen to roll into a Burger King and eat it because your friends told you it was tasty. The point is, they're both examples of the next same thing. And so I believe that being good is important as doing good. And does the next material breakthrough, when I look at it, have the ability to scale from being a one-off product to being the new business as usual choice that also happens to be really good? And I believe at Bolt the answer is yes, because for us the answer is Milo. Uh, this is our sustainable alternative to animal and synthetic leathers that we're on track to scale globally. So this material that you see behind me here, Milo, is made from mycelium, that's the root structure of thread-like cells that make up mushrooms. This revolutionary material isn't based on animal products or petroleum products, but can be used in the same ways as traditional and synthetic leathers. It's, Milo's durable, it's soft, it's supple, we can take it into any color or any embossing pattern, and it's made from these mycelium mats that we grow not in years, but in days on renewable inputs such as sawdust. And compared to raising livestock, it consumes less water, produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions. And we've developed, uh, in addition to Milo, a huge number of sustainable materials technologies, over a dozen, in fact, that we've reduced to kind of the product state. But over the last year, as we thought deeply about the climate crisis we find ourselves in, we really took this idea of scale to heart. It is infused across the business. And the realization we came to when we had a hard look with ourselves is that Milo shares two critical features. One, it has the highest demand from our partners, and it has the fastest process to that, uh, fastest path to that word, scale. So think of Milo as our template for the future at Bolt. 
materials that are made, used, and ending their life cycle in a sustainable way without harming the planet. Milo is our way to create an opportunity together to align purpose and profit. So how are we doing that? So uh, in the past year, we redeveloped the Milo process to be scalable, globally scalable. And we're currently, there's some new information here we've never shared publicly, but we're currently installing capacity to produce 1 million square feet per year of Milo. And we're quickly going to be growing to the tens of millions of square feet per year that our customers are demanding. And as a small footnote on that, uh, that first million square feet per year is 100% allocated to our current top brand customers. Um, but we can't create scale alone. Customers are one part, Bolt is one part. We also believe fundamentally that if you're going to impact the world at billions of people scale, uh, it requires fantastic partners who are aligned on our mission, who stand shoulder to shoulder with us. And many of those customers are in this room, but we e need equally committed supply chain partners as well. So as soon as we started developing the process for Milo, we also began scouring the world for the expertise needed to bring Milo to market. And not surprisingly, we actually found some of the best partners in the world right here in Europe. And to highlight this, we're going to share another piece of new information today. Uh, we're pleased to announce that we've developed an exclusive partnership uh, with Heller Leather in Germany as our tannery partner. And they're going to be helping us bring these mycelium mats into high quality finished Milo for the creative minds in this very room uh, to be playing with and making them great products of the future. Uh, Heller is a 95-year-old family-run business, five generations of knowledge when it comes to tanning. Uh, and the primary reason when we went out looking for people who were mission aligned is who has been authentically committed to environmental sustainability for a very long period of time. And Heller's a uh, leather working group gold standard tannery as well as a Blue Angel certified environmentally responsible facility. And they've been focused on improving the tanning process from an environmental standpoint for decades. And this is important because at Bolt, we're not in the business of creating feel good hyped up biomaterial. We want to actually do good. Uh, another thing we've done on this, we're a bunch of scientists and engineers. We've invested in a life cycle analysis model early and use that to drive how we improve our process. We want to deliver something that truly is better for the planet. So from now on, when you see a news story about a sustainable textile or a bio-based material, uh, I'm going to suggest you ask yourself uh, some simple questions. Will people be able to buy it when and how they want it? Will that be millions and tens of millions of people? And in short, will it scale? So when I think about the next big thing that you guys are going to create, so we believe, oh, sorry, I'm back up a second here. We believe that with dedication and collaboration with all of you, the best days of our people and planet will remain ahead of us. And when I think about the next big thing in fashion and consumer products, I want the innovative, culture-busting products that show up in the headlines to come from all of you. I think that's how it's always been and how it should be. What I'm asking you to do is wait, make one small change. We're going to switch from using the harmful materials uh, that are out there today that don't, uh, aren't compatible with our environment and start using materials that aren't harmful. And the difference that could make in the environment and in the world is staggering. This would be an end to toxic manufacturing processes. Uh, it would be an end to harmful chemicals in our clothing and our water supplies and an end to materials that make our world sick. So what I'm asking is that we remake the future together. And I believe that together, we can demonstrate bold leadership to the world and show that the best days of our planet remain ahead of us. Thank you very much.